Okay, hello there, I'm Dennis. Welcome to the channel. Today, we're going to install Arch Linux 32. For all the people that have the old 32-bit machines, there's still a bunch around. I even have one. A very viable operating system for an older computer. All right, let me get started here. I've got it set up in my virtual box. I give it two cores of my processor, four gigabytes of RAM. Give it 128 megabytes of the video memory. Could not install it using UEFI mode. Not sure why. Uh, I even booted it, or actually I, I burned it to a USB and booted up to a, another machine in UEFI mode, and I still got the same problem. And we'll just go ahead and clone. Let's see, clone. We'll leave it just like it is. That we'll call it a clone. Say clone. Here's the clone, and under settings, we go to system, and I enable the EFI. Say OK, and give us a start. Then I get it booted into this shell, and Regardless of my options here, boot manager, that's usually how you'd get out of it. If I go down and say the VBox CD ROM, it's just going to bounce right back and et cetera, escape. I end up just giving up because I, I get this same option whenever I boot into a real machine. I'm not sure. If you can boot this into a UEFI mode or not. Let me go ahead and get it started here. Minimize that. And our first screen is our welcome screen telling us to boot into Arch Linux 32. Or we can boot into it with speech. Or we can boot into an existing OS. And some other options there. We'll do something about the resolution here in a minute one thing i did do was i used a bridge connector in the network settings here i won't be able to show you that probably yeah right here in network i used a bridge adapter and i hope to be able to ssh into this and install it from there and as you can see this is their latest release and it was released i think on the 6th of april 2021 and it includes the arch linux uh, arch install guide the guided install i couldn't get it to work in legacy mode it even tells you on the website that it will only work if you go to arch linux it, it'll tell you it only work in uefi mode and i could not for the life of me to get arch linux 32 to boot up in uefi mode it, it might i don't know anyway let's go back over here let's see first thing i'm gonna do is get an ip address and we got 192.168.021 under inet there and i'm gonna go ahead and give myself a password so p-a-s-s-w-d for root and we'll have to repeat it okay now I got 192.168.0.2.1. Go over to my other desktop here. And I'm going to sign in as, uh oh, I always do that. <laughs> so I'm going to sign in as root. Lost my train of thought there. Give it my password. Now I'm going to say S. Yeah, SS. H root at oops no no space root at one nine two one six eight zero two one All right and it's gonna ask me to uh, wanna do it yes and it's gonna ask me for the root password on the other machine and there we go. Now it even shows us the script, the new script that they've got here. And let's see Go back to the screen here. See how I can get this a little better in vision here. 
Now, if we ls blk, you'll see that we're in a virtual box, and it's that virtual box, and I gave it 56 gigabytes of hard disk space. So we're ready to get started. We've seen this. I'm going to go ahead and control L. Now, also, we'll point out here if you at Arch Linux 32, and it tells you that they include a guided installer, but it's based on the installation guide. If you open that up, you'll find that this is the Arch Linux installation official page. <laughs> so that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to follow that and install it here. Now, first thing it says is to make sure we're online. And we're going online. We're going to ping artslinux.org five times. Actually, I like to do it this way. Pacman hyphen S Y Y. And I don't know why I like doing it that way. It takes a little longer sometimes, but I think it's worth it. I'm going to control L. Clear that screen. And first thing we're going to do is time date ctl set hyphen ntp true hit enter now we're going to partition our disk so we're going to use cf disk space hyphen z on the device sda hit enter and we're going to use the dos mode and new and we're going to make the first thing we're going to make is a swap space. And we're going to make that six gigabytes. So that's six with a capital G. Hit enter. It's going to be primary. Slide over with the arrow. Hit type. Go up one and indicate swap there. All right. We're going to arrow key down to the free space here. And I'm going to skip over one of the G there. And go 27. Hit enter. It's going to be primary and it will be bootable all right arrow key down new give it all the rest of it and that gives us our three partitions we got our swap partition on sda1 a root partition on sda2 a home partition eventually on sda3 so we're ready to write this out we're going to slide over you and highlight right hit enter it's going to make us type out the word yes Okay, now we quit. And you can see at the bottom there it says syncing the disk. Now we need to format those. SDA1. We're going to go in order here. Row L, Control Shift to V. We're going to make swap on SDA1. We're going to turn that swap on. All right. Now we're going to make a file system of a ext4 on device sda2. Hit enter. Up arrow that back. Backspace the 2 out of there. Replace it with the 3. Hit enter. We'll control L to clear the screen. Now, in legacy mode, we're going to mount sda2 to slash mnt. Hit enter. Now we're going to need a directory or a folder. I think that directory word throws people off. It did me for a while until I understood it was just a folder. All right, so we made it a directory called it MNT Home, and now we're going to mount SDA3 to MNT Home. Enter. Now, if we run a LSBLK, we should see that we have three partitions. SDA1, which is swap, SDA2, which is mount or root, and SDA3 is mounted to home. So I'm going to clear the screen. Now, it says in the Arts Wiki to adjust our mirrors. I have found that it's a lot better not to. So, this next one that we're ready to pack strap, which is a script to install basically the installation it'll install anything rather than type all of that out i'm going to copy and paste it where i can since i can and again we're following right out of the arts wiki i'm going to leave reflector out of there
Fast completion. Paste. Paste. WPA supplicant and wireless tools. Which if you're on a laptop, this would be something you definitely need. That's it. So I'm going to hit enter. And you can pause the video and make your own copy of these. And these are not, you can install anything and everything at this point. There's no limitation on it. You could actually go ahead and do your entire desktop environment. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to GenFS tab. Let's go back over here to the installation guide. All right, let's see where we're at here. The link, got our address here. We've formatted our disk, partitioned and formatted. Now we're running the pack strap installation. Here is the pack strap to MNT, which is the actual hard drive. So here they just show you base, Linux, Linux firmware. And that's enough, but you will need drugs. So anyway, it tells you right, right away that this is just a bare minimum. And if you want more, get more. And it recommends that you do. <laughs> it actually recommends you get, uh, where is it at? That's the mirrors. Base packages do not include all tools from the live installation. So installing other packages may be necessary for a fully functional base system. And that's the reason why I'm I go ahead and get all of that stuff that you just saw during my pack strap. I don't have to get it later. And the next step here in the wiki is GenFS tab and then Arch to root and then our local time and our hardware clock, etc. Go ahead and copy and paste this or copy it and get it ready to paste. Now remember, this is all being installed on Arch Linux 32 in my virtual box on the same machine. My host machine and the virtual machine. The same machine. I wonder just out of curiosity. Uh, we're using 3.3 .3 gigabytes. It's got 32, so I'm good on that. CPU usage is nominal, really. And it's all, it's no, nothing just going crazy. And we're getting download 1.7 megabytes speed. All right, close out of that. All right, Linux LTS, Denium 4. I like to look at the stuff that comes in. To start with, when I first started learning how to install Arch Linux, a lot of these I would install separately. And then I realized after watching and learning that a lot of that stuff comes in and a lot of, a whole lot comes in with base to bell, Linux firmware, and some of this stuff you're going to need later on. DOS FS tools and M tools. You may not need it on the BIOS boot, but you might need it if you're trying to do something on a USB drive, man DP, man pages. Uh, that also says here it doesn't come with the man pages anymore, whereas it used to. Okay, I guess I'm gonna pause the video. This is gonna take a minute. Sometimes our, even our wired connection is slow. It's picking up right now. I'm going to go ahead and pause the video. And I'll be back. Okay, so I'm going to come on back now. It's uh, through downloading and it's actually installing all the software. Creating a RAM image and all the stuff that it does when it gets through. So in other words, it's almost finished with the pack strap. Sure, I copied that. I think I did. That was before pause. Okay, so there we go. It's installed all that. I'm going to go ahead and get into here and I'm going to control L to clear the screen. Control shift V. That's going to be GenFS tab space hyphen capital U for me cap space hyphen lowercase p space slash MNT two greater than chevrons. Base slash MNT Etsy FS tab. I'm going to hit enter. 
Now I'm gonna up arrow that back and then I'm gonna arrow over past the MNTFS tab and I'm gonna CAT Katana Tate. <laughs> I can never say that right. <laughs> We've now seen that we do have UUIDs for our two discs. Now it's time to arch to our root, which basically means we're going from the ISO or the image file to now the actual hard drive. You can see the prompt changed. We're going to remove the local time so it is empty. And for me, for my local time. Okay, so here there might be a change for you in America and Chicago. You'll need your country and you'll need the time zone. So for me, it's in America and in Chicago. I'll hit enter. Now we're gonna set the hardware clock. So enter. So it's H-W-C-L-O-C-K space hyphen hyphen cyst. OHC space hyphen hyphen UTC. Okay, now we're going to find our locale by nano etsy locale.gen. Hit enter. And they've made it real easy right here for us in the United States. Right at the top, as an example, they're using the US. Well, I'm in nano and you use control O. To write it out, enter to confirm, and pro X, we'll get out of here. Now we're going to hyphen gen, let the computer generate, uh oh, <laughs> locale, hyphen gen, hit enter. But that one was found. All right, so now we're going to put that in our etsy locale.com file with this command right here echo language equals in underscore capital us dot utf hyphen eight one greater than chevron etsy locale dot com hit enter now we're going to export the same language All right now we're going to need a host name so i'm going to just go into the host name file using nano let's see we're going to call this Arch Linux 30, oops, 32. All right, we're going to control O, enter, control X. All right, now we got to edit our host plural file, and that's Etsy hosts. And we're going to add these three lines here. You can't actually echo these in place, but I, I like to do it manually. I like to do things manually. And I like to keep them in order. Now this is going to change here a little bit. If you have a static IP address, this is where it should go instead of the 127011. Let's see. So Arch Linux 32. Linux 32. Let me go back here, take space, and then tab. There we go. Now I'm going to control O, write it out, enter to confirm, control X, get out of there, control L to clear the screen. Next thing I need is a password for the root user. P A S S S W D. And I'm going to specify root. All right, that's going to. Make me confirm it, and if they match, I'm good to go. Now I'm going to just use, I'm going to add a, a, a user. Oops, what did I just do? Copy, paste, user add. I'm going to make him a part of the wheel group. Hyphen S slash bin slash b-a-s-h and the name is dennis so user add lowercase m uppercase g the wheel group slash s bin bash dennis all right now just to verify that dennis is in the 
wheel group. There we go. Now we're going to need a password for Dennis. And we're going to confirm it. All right. Now we're going to need to give Dennis pseudo rights so he can update the system. And we're going to do that by capital E D I T O R equals lowercase n. N A N O space by sudo. Enter. And I'm going to go down here to the root user group or specifications. Specification, yeah, and I'm going to go find the wheel group, which is right here. And I'm going to un what they call uncomment that. Control O to get out of here. Enter to confirm. Control X to get out of nano. Control L will clear the screen. Now, very important, this point for sure. Let's enable the network manager. System CTL space enable capital N and a capital M and the word network manager. Now, I got the Linux LTS kernel, so I'm going to run that make init CPIO command against that kernel. You use whatever kernel you use here. And we're fixing to install grub under legacy. So that would be just Pac-Man hyphen S grub. All right, that was done. Control L clear the screen. Control Shift B. We're going to install grub up. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> I'm going to sync the databases real fast. All right, and then we got let's install grub. Yes. Alright, Control L. Now here, you don't have to do this, but I'm going to just to show that it does work. You don't have to put the target in a legacy BIOS uh, installation. You don't have to specify what the target is. You just have to specify device and grub install. Hyphen recheck. Now I'm going to copy. This takes a little longer the, in the Grub install than it does in the UEFI install. Probably because it's BIOS and it's on a hard drive. <laughs> but as you saw, though, everything we've done so far is exactly right out of the Arch Wiki, just like you would install regular Arch <laughs> or Arch 64-bit. No errors reported. Paste this. It's Grub hyphen mk config space hyphen o for output space slash boot slash grub slash grub dot cfg hit enter okay so at this point we could actually just reboot but i'm gonna go ahead and get some stuff for a desktop let me go ahead and just say pacman hyphen s y y u make sure there's no updates which is always possible. Control L, up arrow that back, backspace S Y or Y Y U off of it. And let's get some Xorg space Xorg hyphen X in it. Xorg hyphen apps. Xorg hyphen X kill. Xorg hyphen X clock, Xorg hyphen D R I V E R S. All right, that did it. Now, if that's all spelled correct, since I typed it instead of copying it. <laughs> and if you couldn't guess before, I'm going to get the XFCE desktop. But first, we need all the X driver stuff here, and it should go pretty quick. All right, so I'm gonna make a quick, quick adjustment here. Control L, so I'm gonna go nano, Etsy, Pacman, dot C O N F. <laughs> okay, let me do that down here. It might make a difference. Nano, Etsy, Pacman, 
dot c o n f. And I like the little color in my terminal. And you don't really have to do this if you don't want to. The biggest reason why I like doing it is because I get to see how far along, and you shouldn't have to inst enable the multi lib, they should be already, and they are. Yep, so control O, enter, control X, control L. Now we'll be able to see a little bit better. Pacman hyphen S, XFCE4, XFCE4 hyphen goodies. Then we're going to get, let's see, XDG user DIRS directories, XDG hyphen utils. And we'll go ahead and get light DM, the light DM hyphen GTK greeter, the light DM hyphen GTK greeter hyphen settings. Look at this, if that's everything we need, XFCE, the goodies, tires, tills, light DM. I think that's right. Must all been spelt right. So it's an 80 meg download, quarter gig install. That's not bad for a complete desktop. And that's it. That's a complete desktop. And because I got all those utilities during the very beginning on the packstrap command, you'll be able to plug in a USB thumb drive into your computer and it will register it. <laughs> now, it's what it does at that point. It's up to you. You need to. You may need to, if you want to, you can go into your settings and find uh, removable drives and tell it to mount them when you stick them in or not. Otherwise, you have to manually mount them, which is uh, awesome, too, because that way if you were in a situation where you have to worry about who's sticking what in the <laughs> where, then, and as you can see, by the way, point out on the right side here, you saw the, the progress keep up with it and we should be able to boot this machine up at this point so your control l sure is a lot faster all right so according to the arts wiki we're going you can either control d or you can type exit nope 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 oh. system ctl enable Light DM period service. <laughs> Much better. Thank you. So control D or type exit. Then we're going to U mount space hyphen capital R space slash MNT. All right. And we're going to shut it down and remove our ISO. So shut down. I can control D, control D, control D. Might as well close this. I didn't do anything to say. We're going to go over to my next screen top here. The system is going down or power off. Okay, now we should be able to go here and under storage, get rid of the ISO, say okay, let's restart it. We should see grub, and we do hit enter. And I'm gonna say just control uh, right control C, and see if that'll increase the font size for us. And it does. Okay, should see a mouse, and then almost instantly a login screen. <laughs> Very nice. And this is Arch Linux 32, installed exactly like Arch Linux. I didn't get sound. I get those real quick by going sudo pacman hyphen syyu first. Give it my trusty password. Man, that's huge. I'm going to go out of that. <laughs> that's just too big. <laughs> I'll make it bigger here in a second. All right, nothing left to do. So while it's 
Let me give it something to do here. Pac-Man hyphen S. We're going to get also. Also hyphen utils. Also plugins. Pulse audio. And pay vu control. Now, if I got it all spelt right, I cannot perform that. So. I'm gonna say pseudo bang bang, and I bet it'll go now. Could not find. <laughs> what? All right, must have all been spelled right. So let me go up here and find settings, the top display. Let's see. Let's see what that one does. Let's keep it for a minute. And close. Okay, so now if I reboot, we'll have sound. And hopefully to remember my display setting. There's Grub. Yeah, there was absolutely no difference between this and an Arch Linux installation. This is Arch Linux, only it's based on 686 or 32-bit technology. Man, this thing has saved a lot of machines, I guarantee you. And well deserving. You've got an old machine, it's low on resources. Let's see. Well, I have no way except Task Manager. I don't have any programs. So. Oh, by the way, I got sound now. Let's see. Pseudo Pac-Man hyphen S GNOME system. Hey, well, let's make it easier. Lances. Password. And the rest of this is up to you. Customize how much you want and how much you don't want. You got printer you can set up. Let's see glances. Okay. So right now, CPU is using about two point seven percent. The memory is using just over a half a gig. 541 megabytes. Of course, it's not touching the swap space that I give it. Not even getting close to that yet. Got a long way to go. Very little resources. 542 megs. 541. <laughs> nice. So that's Arch Linux 32. It's left up to you now to decide what you want to do with it. How you want to change it how you want to make it yours and this is just your basic install okay well that's going to do this video i thank you very much for watching if you run into a problem make sure you have the latest iso i had a, a viewer tell me that they had a problem right off the bat installing it and we got some kind of error. And I think it was because they had an outdated ISO and they needed to update the key ring. Not sure, because I wasn't there, but I think that's what it was. It was back in February last year, 2020, I, I did, posted a video, Arch Linux 32, meet this Dell XPS 400, uh, complete all the way to the desktop. and. I got this notice here. It said on dated January the 30th, I tried following this guide and received this error. Error, Arch Linux keyring. The signature from Eric Eckner, just to sign Arch packages, Arch da, 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 is unknown, is an unknown trust. To resolve the issue with Pac-Man SY, Arch Linux 32, hyphen keyring, hyphen transition. And I, I think I know where that came from, and I'll point that out in a second. I'm not real sure, though, about the SY. Uh, I've heard 
that that's that can actually break your system doing it that way but anyway say yes and replace your key ring and rerun the pack strap command if you are missing folders from slash mnt such as the bin boot or sbin it is likely the os did not install due to this error go back over here to number one we're in our get installation guide we've already went past and went into the general recommendations and we've already <laughs> installed the a desktop so we're good to go thank you so much for watching i've had a blast installing arch linux 32 if you've got a machine and it's an older machine and you know you don't know what to do with it put it to work put arch linux 32 on that bad boy make it work for you all right well y'all have a good one i'll catch you on the next video peace out bye <laughs>